President Abdel Fattah Sisi inaugurated the Global Congress on Population Health and Development at the new administrative capital on Tuesday. Addressing the four-day Congress, President Sisi described it as an important platform to discuss population. The head of state warned that financial resources directed to education cannot be increased under the increased uh, population rate, adding that Africa's population is projected to reach 1.6 billion in the near future, adding that overpopulation is the biggest challenge facing Egypt. President Sisi further said reproduction freedom is not ultimate because it is tied to the development file. He stressed the significance of supporting the role of the National Council for Population and directed that the Prime Minister preside over the Council. The President noted that costs of war Egypt went through had affected source resources directed to face overpopulation. Meanwhile, President Sisi attended the first session of the Congress the Population and the Future of Healthcare, Challenges and Chances. Addressing the session, he said the state has exerted tremendous effort to overcome overpopulation adding that in the past 10 years had witnessed a big effort in all paths to overcome the gap between population growth rates aimed for population rate. The Global Congress on Population, Health and Development was held under the auspices of President Sisi on Tuesday. Addressing the event, Health Minister Khaled Abdel Ghaffar said overpopulation is the biggest challenge facing development, saying it is a six-decade-old problem. His address in his address, the minister reviewed efforts to reduce population growth rates. He said Egypt is nominated to increase by 17 million in the coming 10 years. Abdel Ghaffar said planning is the largest project that has been adopted. He also reviewed the most significant Egyptian family health scanning indicators and the features of the national strategy for population. Organizers said the event drew the attendance of 8,000 participants. During his participation in the Africa Climate Summit in Kenya, on behalf of President Abdel Fattah Sisi, Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli gave a speech at the International Climate Agenda session. Addressing the session, Madbouli stressed on the necessity of providing necessary funding to face the repercussions of the global climate change, which needs reconsidering current funding and reviewing the criteria of the flow of investments into Africa. This is in addition to putting a mechanism to using debts and transform them to climate funding. The Prime Minister underscored the necessity of commitment by the developed nations to meet their vows, of providing $100 billion annually to climate financing and the necessity of boosting multilateral systems based on equality and considering conditions of each country. The National Dialogue continued the second session of the sixth week of the Dialogue on Tuesday. The Economic Access Committee held a number of sessions to discuss the files of high prices and means of facing this phenomenon to ease the burden on the citizens in addition to alternatives to decrease the public debt and increase the benefit of local or international debts in addition to industrial aims and a map on the short and long run and also discussing current and struggling industries. The National Dialogue is due to wrap up the sixth week session with the discussions of social access committees next Thursday on cultural industries, youth political empowerment, support of student unions and activities. Foreign Minister Zema Shukri held talks with his Japanese counterpart uh, Yoshimasi uh, Hayashi in Cairo on Tuesday, which tackled means of boasting a bilateral relations in various domains in addition to a number of regional and international issues of mutual concern. At a joint press conference following their talks, the two top diplomats hailed the distinguished ties binding the two nations. Minister Shukri said their talks tackled means of enhancing bilateral ties, including the resumption of direct air flights between the two countries starting the 14th of September and accept, uh, expectations of an increase of tourist flow. He expressed Egypt's appreciation to Japan's enhancement of national projects in Egypt, including the Grand Egyptian Museum, which it was looking forward to participating in its inauguration ceremony. Shukri said the two sides are looking forward to the upcoming strategic dialogue between the two countries in Tokyo next December, which they hoped would result in a declaration that translates tangible steps in cementing ties with the aim of realizing the two people's interests. He further expressed hope of expanding Japanese investments in promising and available fields. Minister Shukri said they had exchanged visions regarding a number of regional and international issues of mutual concern, 
including the impact of the war in Ukraine on developing nations. Describing the talks as positive and constructive, the minister noted that their talks probed the Palestinian cause, the situation in Libya and Yemen, as well as a crisis in Sudan. He said they had consensus visions regarding a number of regional and international issues and agreed on continuing consultation and coordination between the two nations in different political, economic and cultural fields. Saying the visit reflects the side's keenness to foster bilateral relations, especially within the framework of Japanese Premier's visit to Cairo, which witnessed the declaration of promoting ties on a strategic level. For his part, the Japanese minister reiterated that Japan would continue consultations with Egypt concerning the global food security in light of the ongoing Russian-Ukraine crisis. On Sudan, he expressed Japan's concern regarding the current humanitarian situation there. Later, the Japanese minister addressed a meeting in the Arab League headquarters, which was attended by the League Secretary General Ahmed Abu Ghit and Minister Shukri. Foreign Minister Samah Shukri received on Tuesday Commissioner General of the United Nations Relief and Work Agency for Palestinian Refugees in the Near East UNRWA, Felipe Lazarni. The uh, meeting probed UNRWA work aimed at, amid rather current regional situations in light of the urgency of the services it provides for Palestinian refugees in host countries. Shukri voiced Egypt's support for the agency and asserted the need to avoid linking financial contributions to the agency with political considerations. For his part, UNRWA Commissioner appreciated Egypt's efforts in drumming up international support of the agency, saying his agency is keen to continue close consultations with Egypt. Kurdish-led forces were sending reinforcements uh, to eastern Deir ez-Zur province amid days of clashes with Arab fighters loyal to the detained local official. Fighting erupted after the U.S.-backed Syrian Democratic Forces detained Ahmad al-Khabil, head of the Deir ez-Zur Military Council, on August 27th. An SDF spokesman said his forces were trying to settle the situation in the last town where fighters loyal to Khabil were con concentrated. The violence in several towns and villages in Kurdish-controlled areas there have killed 71 people, mostly fighters, but also nine civilians. French media outlet uh, said on Tuesday 